Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. Want to pray for the direction of this nation. We also want to pray for our local region and community here in Spokane. We also want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known. Let's pray together now. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We pray for the direction and the condition of this nation. We pray for a genuine revival, a Holy Ghost revival. We pray for the influence of your word, your spirit, and your church upon this nation. We also pray for our local community and region and pray that you'll open up doors of opportunity and utterance. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, and we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, Everybody said, Amen. I want to direct your attention to two verses of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Begin reading in verse number 3. 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 3. But if our gospel be hid. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. He's not talking about this being like um, a needle in a haystack or... Uh, an apostolic church among several hundred denominational churches in a, in a, in a area, a uh, metropolitan area. He is talking about the only gospel. At the time that this was penned, there were no denominations. There were new, no other um, Christian belief systems other than false doctrines and false teachings. There's only one gospel. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. A lot of people want to argue that point uh, because we're still in a strongly connected Christian nation where people can still associate with a local assembly or maybe parents or grandparents or they had some kind of an upbringing or experience with the church or experience with the word of God Sometimes this is hard, hard to understand, but make no mistake about it. The only gospel that is valid is an apostolic gospel. Acts chapter two and verse number 38. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. What an amazing scripture. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a reality. I want to talk to us very briefly here this morning for the next several moments about the three things that the devil does not want you to know. Here in this particular passage of scripture, without, without argument, it's talking about the gospel, that the devil does everything he can to blind the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ should shine unto them. And so he goes through sometimes very sophisticated measures to distract humanity, to, to fill the mind with things or philosophies or belief systems or the folly of what culture thinks and, and the, the realities that culture determines to be noteworthy. He's able to blind the minds of them which believe not. There are three, there are three powerful things that the devil works overtime, I believe. He does not want you to know who God is. All we have to do is study the historical 
um, pathway to the doctrine of the Trinity. This, this man-made doctrine, um, and it's well documented, it is amazing how they came to this doctrine. In fact, if that's just the beginning of what I believe to be a, a whole uh, corpus of erroneous understanding, understandings and then documentation of not just the doctrine of the Trinity, but going into the birthplace and uh, the galvanizing of the Roman Catholic Church and all of its tenets and all of its liturgies and all of its phony baloney religiosity. And that's not, that is not meant to offend anybody, but we're, we're talking about the devil, the God of this world, blinding the minds of them which believe not. Now, what is it that he is trying to keep them from discovering? Less the light of the glorious gospel. And so the gospel brings with it an entire world of revelation and understanding and knowledge and perception uh, uh, that comes through reality. And the devil is, is doing everything he can. He does not want you to know who God is. Um, he is, he is okay. He's okay for people to believe that there's uh, a triunity or a trinity or uh, something other than what the Bible declares that there is but one God. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And the devil works overtime for uh, that very purpose to distort that incredible revelation that is plainly given to us and declared by the word of God. And then the devil does not want you to know who he is. It's amazing how many people you will meet on a daily basis that will say that they don't even believe in a real devil. They do not believe in a literal adversary that is supernatural and eternal and is against their uh, their well-being and ultimate concern of their life. There's, and the people that deny the existence of that are the people that are absolutely blinded by him. The devil does not want you to know he is there. Well, when I was baptized in Jesus' name, I repented of my sins, I was baptized in Jesus' name, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. One of the most immediate understandings that I had was that there was an adversary. It is amazing how much resistance comes to an individual once they experience the gospel, the only gospel, the only one gospel. And that is Acts 238. And it's 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 in other places, but it's repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of, of your sins and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection, repentance, baptism, and Holy Ghost. It's all there. Because what happens is, is once, once you are baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, a whole new world of understanding comes to you. And once you understand that there is an adversary, uniting with this book, now you have an advantage that you can defeat him, not just in your own personal life, but you can help other people ex extricate themselves from the claws and clutches of the adversary and then eternal doom and damnation. And that is what the devil fears. So the devil does not want you to know who God is. He does not want you to know that the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter one, verse number 14. He doesn't want you to know that great is the mystery of godliness for God was manifest in the flesh. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to have an understanding and a revelation of all that. But that is a preeminent understanding that comes with obeying the truth. So he does not want you to know who God is, and he doesn't want you to know who he is and where he is and what he's doing and just how invasive, insidiously invasive that he truly can become in an individual's life. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's a whole other world of education that comes to an individual but it is absolutely paramount 
that that understanding come. And lastly, he does not want you to know who you are. A lot of people that are attending church attended church yesterday, and it's and 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 as I peruse some of the things that are on places like YouTube and just on on the internet and what people are calling church today is is it's sad, it's very sad, it's very very sad to see what people are accepting as truth and accepting as reality, but it is not that. When you understand who you are, that you are made in the image of an almighty universal God, and that once you have repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that you are now in the church of the living God. You are now accepted in the beloved. You have become the apple of God's eye. And the entirety of this book belongs to us. Now you can do some real damage against the powers of darkness and as a champion for the light. And so that's it. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. He does not want the human race to discover who Jesus Christ really is. And he does not want people to discover who he is, the adversary that is in this world, the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air. And lastly, he does not want you to discover who you really are. My brothers and my sisters, we have this truth and we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have these understandings, we have these revelations, how blessed and how privileged we are. Go and do something with your understanding. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.